And let's get into speaking in tongues this morning. The book of Acts does not teach about speaking in tongues. Now uh, follow me carefully. But it gives us record of the early church and their encounter with the Holy Spirit and the gift of tongues. But as a teaching or instruction, we find this only in 1 Corinthians chapters number 12, 13, and 14, which we'll be discussing today. Question number one, what is speaking in tongues? This is one of the more important questions for today. The first recorded event of anyone speaking in tongues is found in Acts chapter number 2 and verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Take note of that again. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Hindi po tao yung nagturo, okay? Walang libro na pwedeng basahin para matuto tayo ng tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, Acts chapter 2, verse 5 hanggang verse 8. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men, from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is that we hear each of us in his own native language? 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. For one who speaks in a tongue speaks not to men but to God. For no one understands him, but he utters mysteries in the Spirit. Now the question for this morning is, how did those who witnessed this understand what the disciples were saying if they were speaking in tongues? So... On the day of Pentecost, we find out that 120 disciples were worshiping God in the upper room. And as they were worshiping God, the Holy Spirit fell upon them on the day of Pentecost. Forty days after Jesus ascended into heaven. So, ibig sabihin, uh, you know, they were all baptized and they all started speaking in tongues. Mga hudyo, speaking uh, different languages uh, of the people that were present. Halimbawa, merong Chinese doon, nagsalita ng Chinese to mga disciples. And they are wondering why. Bakit kaya? No one can understand tongues unless there is interpretation. So this is a very unique event. The first uh, experience of the church where tongues uh, was, an, uh, was a gift given to them. The Holy Spirit, uh, they were baptized by the Holy Spirit. They started speaking in tongues. This was a very unique event. But first of all, the question is, number one, what is speaking in tongues? And the answer is, it is a language given to us through the Holy Spirit. Should all Christians speak in tongues? Dapat ba lahat ng Christians speak in tongues? I'll give you an example. Filipinos eat rice. Ang mga Pinoy ay kumakain ng kanin. Is that, is that true? Yes? Amen? Yes. Okay. Pero not all Filipinos eat rice. Is that true? Generally, we say that all Filipinos eat rice. Kasi totoo naman yan. But then you'll find, you'll find people na ang diet, eh, kung ano-ano mga diet na ginagawa, takot na sa kanin ng mga tao. So ako hindi pa ako takot sa kanin. Pero yung iba takot sa kanin. Ibig sabihin, as a church, that's who we are. We will be able to speak in tongues. But individually, it's distributed. Individually to the one that the Holy Spirit uh, chooses. Amen. Now, so the question so do all or should all Christians speak in tongues? And the answer is no. Paul said, I wish, but that doesn't mean it's a commandment because the, the description in 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians it says that to one is given or to another is given the gift of tongues. But all of us will receive the gift. It's all subject to the Holy Spirit uh, the Holy Spirit's desire. Kung ano yung ibibigay niya sa atin. All subject to that. Question number three. When, where, uh, when and where can one practice speaking in tongues? One can speak in tongues in church to himself silently or audibly <clears throat> with an interpreter and his private or and in, in his private time with the Lord. Question number four. What is the purpose of speaking in tongues? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4, the one who speaks in a tongue builds up himself, but the one who prophesies builds up the church. So speaking in tongues builds you up. Big Sabine, it strengthens your faith. How does that happen? We, I don't really know. Hindi ko po alam how it actually happens. It's just what the Bible says and what God says that it helps 
edify the believer. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13 to verse 17. Therefore, one who speaks in a tongue should pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue and my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful, what am I to do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will pray with my mind also. I will sing praise with my spirit. I will sing with my mind also. Otherwise, if you give thanks with your spirit, how can anyone in the position of an outsider say amen to your thanksgiving when he does not know what you are saying? For you may be giving thanks well enough, but the other person is not being built up. So it means being understanding is absolutely necessary for others to be built up. So one of the purpose of speaking in tongues is number one, to edify and to build up yourself, to strengthen yourself in faith. When you pray in an unknown tongue, the Bible says that you are building up yourself. It's something that we can never understand or explain. Another purpose of speaking in tongues is to edify and to build up others. But for speaking in tongues to edify and build up others, it must come with interpretation. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 27, 28, if any speak in a tongue, let there be only two or three at the most, at the most three, sorry, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in church and speak to himself and to God. But in a church meeting setting, this is what uh, 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 Paul says, if any speak in tongues, let there be only two at the most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there's no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in church and speak to himself. Now, the reason for this, we've been taught uh, all kinds of stuff in the past. Marami po tayo natutunan. You've witnessed all kinds of different things regarding tongues. But we're going back to what the Bible actually says. Ano ba sinasabi ng Bible? When you go back to the different, uh, for those that have been in different churches, different church settings na merong speaking in tongues, go back to what the Bible says and you'll notice that the, the modern day practice is quite different from what the Bible says. I, I urge you to go, when you go home, read these scriptures that we've talked about and look back to some of the experiences that you've had, maybe we've had here. And a lot of these things have been quite, you know, salungat doon po sa sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. That's why now it's so important that we only teach what God's Word says. If it's not found in God's Word, then we will not teach it. Ibig sabihin, kung may mga katanungan regarding uh, speaking in tongues and it's not found in God's Word, then there's, there must be a reason why God didn't put it in the Bible. You know, there's some questions that we just can't uh, find an uh, exact answer in the Bible. As to problems in life, everything is found in the Bible. However, like some of these things, doctrines, if it's not found there, then we're not going to teach it. Kung ano lang po yung nasa Biblia, that's what is so important. Kasi dyan po nangyayari, dito po nangyayari mga false doctrines is when people start speculating. When people start talking about experiences lamang, you know, and the experience doesn't, doesn't connect with the, the truth of God's Word. And then we, what happens is, nagkakaroon na po ng uh, false doctrines. And that's what we want to get away from. Na malihis po tayo ng landas. Stick to what only God's Word says. Okay, what is the purpose of speaking in tongues? The purpose is for the edification of self, and others when done with interpretation. Now let's go to the conclusion. Number one, speaking in tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It is a biblical, it is biblical, and it is for today's modern church. Para sa ating ito. So don't shy away. Uh, Paul said, don't forbid speaking in tongues. So hindi naman yun po yung pinag-usapan natin, to forbid. We just want to do the biblical, solid biblical uh, teaching on what speaking in tongues and the rest of the gifts are. So that's number one. Number two, speaking in tongues is a language of the Spirit, a language that only God can understand. It's God. It's God that understands. It's just, the whole purpose of speaking in tongues is to talk to God. Number three, not all will have the gift of tongues. We have to take note of this. Kasi mga turo po sa atin nung nakaraan, lahat ng Kristiyano dapat may speaking in tongues. But when you read these scriptures, it doesn't say that all. It says to one to another given. It means being selected by the Holy Spirit, people will be given the gift of tongues. Number four, speaking in tongues can be practiced at church with an interpreter when spoken audibly, at church praying silently to God with an interpreter or in private prayer 
without an interpreter. That's number four. Number five, the purpose of speaking in tongues if for personal edification when practiced at home or at church silently without an interpreter for the edification of others when spoken with an interpreter. And finally, the gifts of the Spirit is for edification or the building up of others and not self. Not just speaking in tongues, but all of the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues should not be forbidden in church services, but should be done in a biblical, orderly manner. Biblical meaning with an interpreter, if done in church audibly. In order, meaning one at a time and up to three tongues. So, in conclusion, finally, 1 Corinthians 12 verse 31 says, But earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you still a more excellent way. And that more ex excellent way is in the following verse, which is 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have the prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. If you notice, verse 1, hang on, verse 3, talks about the different gifts of the Holy Spirit. However, what's more important, sabi ni Pablo, is the more excellent way, which is love. Amen po. So let's not allow the gifts of the Spirit to cause division in the church. Minsan kasi, uh, I've seen it before, na, na di divide po in church because of uh, the gifts of the Spirit. You know, people speak in tongues, people that don't speak in tongues people prophesying over one another, and so forth and so on. But let's do all things in love. Yun naman po ang mahalaga. Amen? Uh, don't pursue uh, the gift. Desire the gift, but don't pursue the gift. We pursue love. Amen? 